Okay, thank you for watching. I honestly can't believe I'm doing a video on this topic because it's so simple, but uh, it's come up in, in conversation a number of times in the IRC channel, and that's dragging and dropping files in a file browser. Um, and <laughs> it's, I have people come in and say, oh, in, in Linux you can't drag and drop files uh, from one folder to another because it tells you you can't, and, and that's ridiculous and completely not true. Uh, what might make a difference is permissions. So we're going to look at this a little bit here. Let me go ahead and open up Thunar. Thunar is uh, a file browser that I'm using. Uh, it's the default uh, file browser for XFCE desktop. So let me uh, just give you some examples here. So right now over here on the left you can see my devices and you can see flip video. So I plugged in my flip video camera and if I click on it, it mounts it. So it wasn't mounted when I first put it in, and it's mounted now. You could tell it wasn't mounted because it was grayed out, kind of like this 16 gig uh, volume right here. So right away, I can right click this, and you can see I can create a folder, and the folder is created. So I have permission to write to this, um, this folder, to this device. Uh, now, if I was to click this eject button, you can see it disappears from over here. So let me go ahead and close this. And um, there is a difference between ejecting and unmounting something. So what we just did, we ejected it. So if I list out my devices here, SD whatever, you can see that I have devices SDA, SDB, and SDC. The flip camera was actually SDD. So it's gone now because ejecting is like even though I physically haven't pulled it out of the computer yet, I ejected it, so it thinks it's ejected. It's like ejecting a CD-ROM. So if I pull out the camera and plug it back in, and I list this out again, give it a second here, there we go. It's actually showing up as SDE now. Um, so it's there. So that's the difference between ejecting and unmounting. I want to point that out first off because if I unmount something, you'll still see it here. It's just not mounted, but when you're ejecting it, it disappears completely. Okay, so again, I can open up my file browser again, and it's right there. And I can click it, but I'm not going to. And again, you can see it's grayed out now. That means it's not mounted. You can set it up to automatically mount everything. I don't recommend that, but you know, it's your system. You can do whatever you want. But let's say I wanted to mount it. Um, I can go sudo mount and I can tell it what device and it's going to tell me after I type in my password because you do need to have sudo permissions and we'll talk about that more in a moment to mount a device like this so I'll hit enter it says can't mount that and it can't be found in fstab um, or fs tab however you want to say it uh, and that's a file where you can tell your computer when certain devices are plugged in what to do with them. So if there's certain devices like the flip camera, if I want to automatically have that be mounted, I can have it automatically mounted. And if a file is in there and I tell it to pseudo mount it, it will know where to mount it to. But since I don't haven't set it up, set up that device, uh, it's not seeing it. So I need to tell it where I want to mount it. So sudo mount, and I'll just put it to my MNT file because nothing is there right now. So my MT folder. Now I can CD into that folder. I can list out. You can see it's the same file. If I try to create a file by going touch one and hit enter, it's going to say permission denied. Okay. Well, let's open up Thunar. So again, the same uh, device that we were looking at before. I can go right click, and you'll notice that create folder and create document are grayed out. Okay because I don't have permission. This is not a drag and drop issue. This is a permission issue. I mounted it as sudo. So to write to it, you need sudo or root permissions. So depending on how you mount it, you may or may not have permissions to write to it. And this all depends on, I mean, let's say you had 10 people that logged into this computer. You don't want everyone to be able to access your device when you plug it in. You know, there's, there's different scenarios there, but it's all up to you and how you have your system set up. So basically, if I was to open up another Thunar screen here, and I was to put one here and one here, and I was to go to, I guess, my home folder here, and I try to drag this file over, it's not going to work. And this is what people are talking about. They're going, oh, it's, it's not working. I can't, I can't drag and drop files. Now, you notice I can drag this way. 
because I have permission to write to my home directory. I don't have permission to write to this because of the way I mounted it. It doesn't have to do with drag and dropping, it has to do with permissions. And this is a security feature. So I can close both of these and I can go sudo umount and I can unmount that. And it says it's busy because I'm in that folder right now. It won't let you unmount it if you're working in that folder. So let me move out of that folder and I'll sudo uh, umount to unmount it. And there we go. Okay, so now again, I can open up Thunar and now you can see the flip video cameras back here. And again, if I open it here and I'll unmaximize that, I'll open up a new screen. So, and I'll go to my home folder here. So now that I mounted it this way, I can drag and drop over here. See? So it all has to do with how you mount it and what permissions you give. Now I also want to point out that if I run the mount command without anything else, it tells me you know, a list of all my mounted devices. And um, if we look at the bottom here, you can see the last device mounted. And it also tells you right here, RW, that means that it's readable and writable. Because not only do you have permissions when you mount something, but you can also mount something such as this system up here as RO, meaning read only. In that case, even if you're root, you're not able to write it right to that device unless you remount it, which if you're root, you should be able to do. So this is something else you need to think about. Are you mounting it as rewrite? Usually, unless you say to mount it as read only, it's going to mount as read write. But then again, you need to have, each user needs to have their own permissions to access that file. Now you might be going, okay, why do I need to sudo to mount something, but I don't inside something like Thunar? And sometimes maybe you're running Thunar and you go to mount something and it tells you don't have permission. And I'm not gonna get, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not gonna get into that in detail, um, but basically you need to set it up to allow Thunar to mount stuff. Basically you're, you're gonna be giving a process, you're going to be running a process basically with a group permission to mount stuff. And uh, so I have permission as sudo, but you can give different users different permissions. I can give, let's say I have John and Jim both accounts on the computer. I can give John permission to mount stuff and I can tell Jim he can't, he doesn't have permission to. Um, so it all depends on how you, again, how you have things set up, all about how you have your system set up. Now. When you're in the shell here, again, we said sudo mount, you could mount devices that way. If you look in your <clears throat> repositories, and I'm gonna use aptitude well, for Ubuntu users, I'm gonna do apt cache, search, and I'm going to do pmount. And I'll list out files here, and you can see there's a program called pmount, and right here it says mount removal devices as normal user. So if you wanted to mount stuff from the shell and have normal users permission to write to that, you'll want to install pmount and use that. So there's an option for you. Um, so another thing that you can do, open Thunar up again. And Thunar is a nice lightweight um, file browser. Um, but what you can do is if I was to, well, let's go ahead and go back to our shell. I'm gonna go, well, again, let's, Oh, well, clicking it that way is going to eject it. So let me unplug it and plug it back in. And again, you can use the eject command from the shell to do a similar thing. If you eject, you can eject a CD-ROM drive. It will actually pop out the CD-ROM. Let me go ahead and sudo mount device SDE1, and I'll get it mounted at MNT. And I'll open up Thunar there. And again, if I click here, oh, let's go to that folder. And if I right click, I can't create files, which means I don't have permission to write there. And if I open up another browser here, so the one on the left is running, uh, or sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So over here, the one on the right is the device. And I mounted it as sudo. Again, if I right click, I don't have permission to create documents or folders. And if I try to drag to it, I can't drag to it. Okay, so let's say you have something mounted as that and you want to be able to drag and drop stuff to that folder, but it's already mounted with escalated privileges, escalated higher privileges. Um, what you can do is, well, you have a few different options. Let me say, let me go to my MNT folder. 
I can do sudo thunar. And it normally would ask for a password there since I just typed it in, it's already stored. But you can see I now have thunar running as uh, root here. So if I was to tab over here, you can see I can create folders and documents and I can drag to it. And let's tell me that file already exists over there. Just skip it. Uh, I'll drag this over there. So I can drag files and I can also delete files. Um, but it doesn't work the other way. So if I was to come here and go MNT, so here, same folder. And if I was to go uh, to a folder where I have some files, so home, and I was to try to drag this file over here, I can't. The, the, the screen that you're dragging to has to have the permissions to write because it's the file doing the writing. This is the same thing in the shell. If I was to try to CP or MV, copy or move files to a folder, I need to run sudo or have permissions to do that. And basically this is running as that. So let's say you don't want to write sudo thunar every time you want to open up a screen like this. Perfect, no problem, we can do that. So here's thunar again. We still have that drive mounted as read only, or it's not mounted as read only, but regular users, non-root users, don't have permission to write to it. They only have permissions to read from it. <clears throat> Excuse me again. If I go up here to edit, and this is in thunar, and if you're running Nautilus, Nautilus has an option, I don't remember if it's built in or if it's a plugin, but it has something that does this, I know it does, I think KDE does as well. Uh, but for thunar, if we come here, we go edit, and we go configure custom actions, we can make our own actions, and I already created one, I'm gonna delete it here so I can show you how to make it. Uh, our, we can create our own custom actions that do pretty much anything. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say plus to create a new one, I'm gonna call it open, as root and I'm going to give it a description as open folder as root uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to go gksu that's just a GUI front end for su instead of typing your password at the shell it's going to give you a GUI interface to type your your password in at so we can start any program we want we're going to start thunar we're in thunar we're starting thunar and we want to open what? Well, down here it gives you a list of options, and as we can see, is uh, percent %n is uh, the selected files uh, file names. So I'm going to do percent capital N, and I can give it an icon as well if I wanted to. In fact, let's do that. We'll click on icon. I'll say show all icons. You can also choose images that you have, and I'm just going to pick something, um, something that would tell me. Let's do. Let's do a happy face, <laughs> whatever. So, so we'll have an icon and we're gonna click on conditions here. Instead of text file, which is what it chooses by default, we're gonna choose directory. We're gonna click okay and click close. Now, again, I don't have permission to write. You can see uh, file folder. I can also say open as folder. So I do it, if I click over here in the open area, I can open the current folder. If I click over here and do it, it will open up that folder. So let me go ahead and right click here and say open as root. It's running gksu. It's going to ask me for my password which I'll type in. I can ask it to remember for a certain amount of time. I'm just going to leave that unchecked for now. Click OK and I got an error when getting information on file. I guess you have to click on a file. I thought you, you could click on the background there. My mistake. I'll click on this folder here. I'll say open as root and I'll type in my password. I think I typed it right. There we go. So it opened up that and I can always up directory to here. So now anytime I click on a folder, you have that option. I don't know why it gives you that option there and it doesn't work. Let me try something. I'm clicking here and go open that. Yeah. So I guess clicking on the background there doesn't work. You actually actually have to click on a folder icon. But either way, once you add that, you can easily always open as root type your password. You can ask it to remember for the session that we don't have to keep typing it in. And once you do that, now I can just like before, I can go to my home directory over here and I can drag a folder or file just like that to there. 
So that's how you do it in Thunar, or yeah, Thunar. Like I said, Nautilus and KDE have options like that, either Ori built in or their plugins. Check the repositories. I know they're there because I used to use Nautilus all the time. Uh, but I actually use a different file browser most of the time. I actually really like a file browser that's very similar to Thunar. It's called um, PC Man FM, PC Man File Manager. And you can see it looks just like Thunar. And I tell you um, two things I like about this. Uh, one, if I hit F3, it can split the screen so that I don't have to open up a new window every time I want it to, you know, see two files or drag and drop something. So I can go, you know, into my pictures folder here and I can drag a file over there without having to open up a separate window. It's just one window and I can hit F3 again. I mean, it's nice. It only does a double split and it does tabs. I don't remember if Thunar does tabs. Another thing is once I run it, uh, let me go ahead and sudo U mount my flip camera. Again, I have, can't be in that folder while doing that. Okay. Now that I have PC Man FM running, if I unplug my camera and I plug it in, it will pop up this, do you want to open it up? And that, that's nice. I like that. I don't like it, you know, it automatically opening it, but I can have different options here and that's nice. Either way, it's just a little thing I like about it. I like it. It's lightweight, very similar to Thunart, with a few extra features in there. Um, but I haven't really looked into, if I right click, there's no open as root that I can see. And um, I'm 100% sure that you can enable some sort of functionality to open folders as root um, by clicking like that but I don't see that option. So again, if you are using PC uh, FM, uh, the PC Man file manager, uh, you can always sudo PC Man FM. And again, it would ask for a password there normally, uh, but it already has my password stored because I already typed it into that shell. And here it is opened as root. So now it doesn't give you a big bar across the top saying that you're running as root to warn you. Um, but you can see one, it doesn't have all my settings for my drives over here like I do in my regular account. And I think maybe this exclamation mark, yeah, you're in super user mode. So now if I wanted to, I can, you know, go to MNT, which I don't have that drive mounted yet. Well, but another example is just my root directory. Normally I don't have permission to write there. I can drag and drop files there now. So, and I can delete stuff from there. So it's all about permissions, there are many different file managers out there. Most of them support drag and drop. There are a few very, very lightweight ones. I can't remember the names of them. I know, you know, on the shell there's a, a Midnight Commander. I think there's a GUI one similar to that. Uh, and then there's also, oh, now I'm going back 10 years when uh, DSL Linux um, was around. Well, it's still kind of around, not really though. They had a lightweight file manager that didn't have drag and drop. It had a split screen and you would select a file on this screen, select a file on this screen, then you go copy that way or copy that way or move this way or move that way. There were buttons down the middle. But if you're running, like I said, Nautilus, Conqueror, uh, Dolphin, is Dolphin and Conqueror the same thing? I don't know. I don't use KDE anymore. Uh, Thunar or PC uh, FM, and I'm sure there's a few others. They all have drag and drop. And if you're having issues dragging and dropping to a certain folder or device, it's a permission thing, not a drag and drop thing. It's it's basic computer functionality. Uh, and the same is somewhat true in Windows. Now, if you go back, uh, you know, more than 15 years ago, back to before Windows XP, you know, Windows 98, 95, 3.1, that sort of stuff, which wasn't even an operating system, it was an operating environment for DOS, actually. Um, prior to Windows XP, there weren't any um, file uh, permissions on those systems. So if you had multiple users, every user could uh, access every other user's files. Uh, it wasn't until XP and they started implementing the NTFS file system because these permissions are kind of you know, integrated into the file system themselves, 
that you do have some permissions, you know. Now, most people, when they're running Windows, they're pretty much running as a administrative user, which is really not secure. Newer versions of Windows do have some things that make you feel like there's permissions, but there are, I'm, I'm pretty sure in Windows, um, you know, I use, I have a Windows computer at work that I have access to and I play around with sometimes and it's running Windows 7. Um, there are files and folders that you try to access and it says you need to be root and you right click and you say open or run as administrator. And it's funny because even if you're already administrator, it asks you to do this. It's like it doesn't realize that you're administrator. Um, so it's, it's pretty much the same in Windows, although a much more looser security, if we can put it that way. Um, but if you don't have permission to write to a folder or device, you need to change the permissions for that user or change users. It's, it's the same. Um, and again, all depending on how you mount it, what permissions a user has, and um, you know, in, in which way you, you mount it. So that's it. Uh, very basic functionality. Again, if I can split the screen here, I can obviously drag and drop files, and it's actually, in this case, you know, there's removing files, where if I open up this folder, so I drag this over here, oh, there's already that file there. Let me delete that. This is one more thing that might confuse you. Just be clear about this. If I drag this over here, you notice it made a copy. It's there and there. Look, I'll drag this, read this file. Over, oh, that's already there. If I drag this uh, core file over here, a bigger file it copied it right well if I come in here and I go to let's say um, home folder pictures and I drag it oh now it moved it look we're moving files the reason for that is we're on the same drive here by default uh, and I think most file browsers are going to do this if it's the same device if it's the same hard drive it's assuming you want to move it if it's a different, like I'm copying to a flash drive, SD card, or external hard drive, it's going to copy it because it's going to think, well, you maybe want to keep a copy on your, on your, uh, you know, the other drive. So that's another thing to think of. Oh, and one last thing, while talking to people online about this, they were having issues writing to stuff, and I asked if they have the switch. They were talking about an SD card. Full-size SD cards, not the mini ones, have a switch on the side that usually have the word lock next to it. If you slide that one way, it makes that device read only and you will not be able to write to it as root or however you mount it. You can't mount it as read write if that slide, that little switch is slid into the lock position. And I have had SD cards and certain readers that are really tight and SD cards where I slide it in there and every time I slide it in, it pushes it into the lock and I actually would have to put tape over that little um, tab there. So that's another thing. Uh, USB drives don't usually have that, but if you're working with a full-size SD card and you're having trouble writing to it, make sure that you slide that little, that little tab into the unlocked position, otherwise you will only be able to read to it no matter what you do on your computer. And that's about it. Uh, kind of a long tutorial for a simple topic, but I think it had to be said because this was confusing some people. I thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day. Please visit my website, filmsbychris.com, Chris the K, link in the description. Again, have a great day. <laughs>